Hey everyone, Ben Crosswhite here, spine fitness expert and uh, personal trainer. And I wanna go through today what a neutral spine looks like. And I should say what a true neutral spine looks like because a lot of people will have a misconception. And I'm gonna go down into the anatomy, break it down a little bit for you and explain why it's so bad to put your back into a hyperextended motion or uh, flexion especially. So let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see on my spine model, the natural S curvature in the spine, that curvature is what you want. It's what you're looking for, the lordotic curvature at the bottom, the kyphotic curvature here in the thoracic spine, and the curvature up at the, uh, the sorry, uh, cervical spine. And that curvature is gonna help absorb pressure. If not, and your back is really straight, then probably you have over tightness in certain areas. You might have some weakness in other areas and paraspinals that's not giving you that natural curvature. And the more straight the spine is, the more compression you're gonna have on the in plates and the disc and the, uh, and the joints. So let's get into where the pressure is distributed and why the neutral spine is important and what that neutral spine looks like. You have facet joints here on either side, all the way up. You have the main vertebral body with the intervertebral disc inside. Around that disc, you'll see it's an annulus fibrosis that is basically a collagen-like uh, matrix around the nucleus pulposus is what it's called. And if that starts to give way, you can see right here you have a herniation and that happens when it's overuse or over flexion of the spine and it wedges in the opposite direction of what it should wedge and it pushes on the back side, the lateral back side. You can see it kind of presses on that nerve here. So when you get a bulging disc, whether it's a sequestration or a, uh, or a prolapse or whatever it is, it'll push on that nerve ending there that shoots down into the lower extremities. And that's where you do get the radiculopathy and, and uh, you know different kind of radicular pain down the leg, uh, sharp shooting numbness, things like that. So the neutral spine is in that position. So the biggest thing to make sure you don't do is an over flexion of the spine. And you can see the wedge shape is going more in this direction, in the lumbar spine. Now, when you flex the spine, it's gonna go in a wedge in the opposite direction. And that, along with a little movement to the side, the lateral side, it's gonna push that nucleus off to the side. It's gonna compress into the annulus and you could get a bulging disc or herniated disc. On me, what that looks like, instead of when you're doing a deadlift, when you're picking something up, any kind of movement of a squat variation you're going down, that straight back is not a neutral spine. This one is not a neutral at all. A neutral is actually a little bit of hyperextension to give that natural S curvature in. Now, it's not gonna be an over hyperextension either, because that's hard as well. So you wanna have a natural curvature here, enough to keep abdominal bracing, really good intra-abdominal pressure. Your erectors, your paraspinals are engaged because when they're engaged, it takes pressure off the actual spine. So when you come down into a deadlift, you see my back is a little hyperextended. It's not rounded. That's when you're in a dangerous position. And the only time you should put your back in a position like that is when it's not overextended period of time. And we'll get into that later as well. But Picking something up with load in front, anterior load, picking something up should never be flexion and it should never be flexion for a long period of time like sitting in a car. Um, you always wanna get up and stand, readjust, get that neutral spine again, and then go from there. Now, going into the, the anatomy of the spine, you have the facet joints on the side, they're lubricated with the synovial fluid and these synovial joints, or um, uncovertebral joints, they're called. and and so it produces that lubrication. Now you have 35% that it puts pressure on either side. So 70% on the facet joints, and then you get 30% on the disc itself. So when you bend forward and you lean to the side, it's gonna automatically put more pressure on the one facet joint. So instead of 35%, it may be 50 or 60, and then it's gonna put more pressure on that side of the disc. The reason it's the most dangerous type to do is a forward lateral flexion is because the lateral uh, posterior sides of the disc on the back, you see where that bulge is, it's the most common in that area because that is the least amount of collagen matrix. And it's actually longitudinal fibers and not across matrix fibers. So it's not as thick as the front. So the anterior side here, hardly ever will you see a bulging disc or a herniated disc on that side. It is possible, but it's not common. And that is because that is much thicker 
than the opposite side. So to protect that, you keep the hyperextension, you keep a good neutral spine, you keep your backs engaged, and you have to make sure that you're properly loading and not overloading, that you're doing a progressive plan of exercise and you're developing those paraspinal muscles going all the way down and the erectors that are really helping to keep that spine stable. Because if a spine is not stable, you're gonna have a lot of issues. So hopefully that helps y'all. Um, shoot me a message, ask questions. I love to talk more about spine fitness and, uh, and hopefully it helped you today.